Hello, well today we're going to make an industrial looking, you could use this and put it on the front of a card if you made a, a card with a box and you could put happy birthday, you could put a cog. I've done it fairly basic so that we're using very basic supplies that you might have around the house. I've done this sort of reds and blacks. If you had black gesso, the ideal thing would be to use black gesso because that makes it a lot more industrial looking. But not everybody has black gesso, so I'm going to show you how to do it with white gesso. You need your glue gun heated up. This is an industrial one, so it's very, very hot. If you've got one that doesn't get quite so hot, that's absolutely brilliant. Uh, you will need drinking straws, a piece of corrugated cardboard that's been distressed and part of the layers taken off, ideally the size you want your finished piece to be. Gesso, I've got white but black would be ideal because it makes it as I say a lot more industrial looking but you might not have black so I've done it with white to show you. Some acrylic paint, I did the original one with red because I quite like red and black, it looks quite dramatic. I'll do this one with blue because then you can see sort of a different look. Some paint brushes, obviously. Um, industrial looking stamps if you've got them. If not, anything background stamps would do. A scrap of baking parchment. Some fairly thickish paper or thin card that you're going to cut up and some scissors. If you've got it, something like gilding wax would be ideal for the end. If not, you can dry brush with a gold paint or whatever. And for finishing touches, some distress ink in vintage photo or a rusty sort of colour. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to cut our straws. I'll pop that to the side to fit our base. These have got a little bend. You can use the ones that haven't got the bend but you won't get the industrial looking corners which are quite nice and add texture. This is just a normal straight drinking straw which can look quite nice but it's better if you can get the bendy straws. These are actually really chunky ones but you can use a lot, lot smaller ones if you want. So you're going to think about where you want your bends and your pipes and everything else to go. So I think about my first one there. So I'm going to cut that off there. And these cut fairly easily with a pair of scissors, just normal kitchen scissors. And there. Hang on to your spare bits. Do not lose your spare bits because you'll need those later. So my first bit's going to come down like that. I then want another piece. So I'm going to cut this off. There. And I'm going to have it going like, like that. there and as I say hang on to your spare bits doesn't matter if they don't meet up perfectly because what you are going to do is you see you could even have it going off there which I think I will you're going to put glue here these extra bits that you've cut off cut them into small sections where you've cut them you'll have a bit of a distressed line it'll sort of break the plastic a little bit and it'll crinkle if you cut along there and then add these in every so often on your other bits of pipe they don't have to be the same what you're doing is opening them out so you've got a flat piece, popping them out 
and the join will go around the back. Your normal straws with no bends, I quite like to just add one or two of those in as well. So again you just cut off the excess bit, measure it up and think yep yeah, that will go there. You could have another bit coming in at the side if you wanted. this on the original one but I think I'll try this. Again cut through your extra bit, open it out slightly and pop it round. There we are, round that, round your straw. Keep these for later, you might need those. I think we might have Another one coming in there. Yeah, so I'll cut another piece of that off. I will cut down the line. Place that round so it looks like a collar. And then so I think, right, that's going to go there. Right, when you're happy with how you've got your placement, with your little collars in place, very, very carefully, you want to put hot glue down the back and be very, very careful. Now, depending on how um, flimsy your straws are, it could melt your straws a little bit. Don't worry because it'll just melt the back. You won't see that. Don't worry about that at all. Right. So, I tend to leave them all in place and then I know more or less where they're going. This bit is, you see the collars there, when I press it out it will make sure that the collar sticks on as well. This being an industrial glue gun, I've got a bit of wiggle room. Yours might dry or set a bit quicker. Now this one I think might be now a little bit short. Yes it is. So I'm just going to do another bit. Oops. That's better, yeah. So I'll borrow that colour off there, put it on there, down the back, and again stick it in place. Alright, your straight one, exactly the same, you just go down the back. This is a bit more fiddly because it's a lot thinner and you're more likely to burn yourself so do be very careful. I tend to find that these little ones like to sit in the grooves of the corrugated cardboard. Another extra bit. I can be very careful. I'll try not to swear when I burn myself. Like that. Right, now it looks a bit disjointed and you think, well that doesn't look very good. Where you've got your joins, you are going to pour hot glue. Because this will look a little bit like a very uneven soldering. So what you want to do is put it on the top and let it drip down. So that it joins itself to the corrugated cardboard. The same here, start at one side, do a little puddle, go across and then another little puddle. So can you see I've got a blob, a blob, but a string across. So again a blob, a string across and another blob. So it looks as if it's strapped to the wall. This could be a joint so you go at either side 
of E. coli and across. An industrial solding does not look pretty, so it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. On the plastic bits, you've got a big gap there. So basically, go round your joint. So you're covering your joint. You don't get it first time, just go back in because it'll flow. This has got quite a big joint, so I might have a bit of a problem with this. But we'll just keep pouring glue until it sort of covers it up, basically. I might have to set, let that set and then go back over it. This one is not such a big joint. So there we are. Put a bit more on there, I think. A little bit more on there. Because once it's set, you can go back over. Right. So then... Basically, need it to dry. So, I think that's got all the bits covered. Yeah, that bit just needs a bit more work. So, what I could do is I could try a little collar and see if that would work. I don't know if it will. It might just. So if you've got a problem area, you can always put another little collar on to make it a little bit closer. See, it's industrial, so it doesn't really matter if it's not perfect. And the more added bits you have, the better. So we might have another collar here. Just hold it while it sets. That's that, that's that. That one I think is alright. Yeah. So I'll just put a little bit more glue around there. And let it run, and a bit more around there, and let it run. Set, so we'll do a bit more. It's actually easier if you haven't got such an industrial glue gun because it does dry, not dry but set a lot quicker. So then I'm going to just undo my glue gun so it'll cool down. Keep these for another project. Move your glue gun away for the moment. Get any little strings out of the way, and then, oh, while your glue gun is still hot, you need some little rivets. So, little blobs with your glue gun onto this baking parchment. Just little tiny ones, try and get them a fairly consistent size doesn't matter if they aren't, you'll get probably get matching pairs. And again, it doesn't matter if they aren't exactly the same. Now I've got uh, a few different bits and pieces where I think I'll want them. So that should do me. Your strips of paper, put those aside to set. I just do this by eye. Right. You need strong enough paper so that it, it moulds and so that it will bend, but it doesn't need to be really, really strong. Because as well as your 
bits where you've got your collars. You can also put some like brackets, which are like this, which is just a piece of paper or card, as I say, and it is going to go like that over some areas. You can even even put them over where you've got the join in your pipe and have a double layered bit. And my glue gun is still hot, so I can use this to stick them on because it keeps very hot. If it's, I shouldn't have said turn your glue gun off because you might still need it, but mine stops hot for a while. And it's easier on your fingers if you don't have molten glue where you're pressing, so be very careful when you're doing this. So it looks like a bracket that's holding it to the wall. I think I'll have another one there. So you're just sort of pushing it so that it's round your pipe and then fixed to your base. So we've gone down the middle of the paper, onto your pipe, onto the base, and you're just going to press it on. Try and tuck it a little bit underneath your pipe so it moulds round and then onto the base. You might have one here. Yeah, I think we'll have one there. Now, I did realise when I did the first one that it's more difficult to do this later, but I still did manage. So. I sort of tucked it underneath there, went across and round. You can always push your scissors or something into the holes if you're having trouble. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because you see the whole overall thing. Your little blobs of molten glue should now be set. So they make little rivets. I think that's the proper term for them, my husband would tell you. Which you can then glue on to the either side of your collar. You can do just little blobs like that, but I tend to stick a blob on because if I don't get those perfect, it doesn't matter because that will go on the top and be raised up. And you don't need much glue at all. And that one's gone on the side of the tube. Never mind, we'll just push it down. It doesn't matter if it's perfect because, I think that must be my saying of the day, it doesn't matter if it's perfect. Right, so one here. got a glue gun and you're sticking all this with something like gel medium obviously you'd let all your pipes be there what you could do for this is a little bit of string with a blob of um, glue just to make a band or just do the bands like this if you haven't got a glue gun um, and then just use gel medium or something for on here to glue because gel medium's got a reasonable amount of body and will hold a bit of body. Right, now that one I have done the little blobs just with my glue gun, not sticking them on. It is a bit trickier, it's easier to do the little blobs first and then stick them on. And as I say, if you haven't got a glue gun, you could do little beads, little gems, because you're going to gesso over everything, so it doesn't matter. Let's move those out of the way. So you've got all your pipes, all your brackets, your collars, the lot. So the next thing is gesso everything. I'm just going to put a blob on my mat. Probably way too much as usual, but anyway. Now, as I say, if you were doing 
black gesso it would be much better but white gesso because I know everybody's got white gesso is fine and you're just basically coating everything because you've got your corrugated cardboard at the back and that's got texture that gives it in an industrial look you want to go over your glue you want to go over all your pipes your collars everything if you do miss the odd bit it doesn't matter because you can always put some black paint or some rust colored paint in anything any gaps that you have just try and get into all your nooks and crannies around your pipes because underneath if you've got pink pipes it does look a bit odd so try and work underneath I find that sort of a part, partly dabbing and partly brushing works well. I might have to stop the video, dry this, give it a second coat and then come back or else you'll be watching gesso dry, which isn't much fun. So say you go backwards and forwards in these nooks and crannies is the best, the most important bit. So I sort of wiggle my brush underneath to coat the tubes as well as, it is a bit messy is this, as well as the corrugated cardboard, all the bits and pieces. And don't forget inside the tubes. Like I've used yellow straws, but it doesn't matter. You don't actually see the colour of them in the end. So it's looking a lot more like the finished product at this stage because you've covered everything and you've unified it all. And as I say, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Right, I'm going to pause the video so that I can dry that. Right, so we've got our industrial panel got this far. What I will do is I will now put some blue paint as opposed to the red that I used last time. Just put it on my mat there for a minute. We'll go with a big brush. Because the gesso will take it, we'll just blather it on. Now you can go as heavy handed or as light as you want. I like quite a lot on, but as you can see, it highlights the texture on the gesso and on the cardboard and everything else if you just lightly do some areas. So you can just do sort of a light brushing if you want and leave some areas not covered. It's entirely up to you. For speed in this, I'll just do it fairly lightly and leave some white areas. I'll do, definitely do the edges because I think it then gives it a border. Makes it look as if it's finished. As I say, this is ideally done in, in black would be better. But not everybody has black gesso or black paint. So basically, that's it. So it sort of looks as if it's in a warehouse somewhere and somebody's painted it and the paint's starting to wear off. So my hands. I'll get rid of the blue paint and then we don't end up with it everywhere. Give it a quick 
quick blast, make sure it's completely dry. Now the next step you don't have to do, but I think it actually adds to it. I've got some um, black ink pad. Ideally you would use stays on because it's going onto acrylic ba uh, paint which is um, plastic based but if you haven't got it this does dry eventually. Sponge, memento and I just randomly, very randomly, don't plan it, just go for it, brush it over and it'll blacken some of the white areas, it'll pick up some of the detail it'll make it look more grungy if you want to clean a workshop and factory and not quite so grungy don't go with the black but i think it just adds to it as most of you ladies know i'm all about the layers but i'm not being precious and thinking oh that hasn't got any i'm just randomly going over it so it's layers and layers and layers I'm using a sponge, I can go in between. It almost looks as if messes and rubbish has dripped down as well. So that's that. That does dry fairly fast. I actually also like quite like the odd number stamp where you've got a bit of corrugated cardboard that's flat like that, you can add the odd number which is quite nice or even if it hasn't got much corrugated cardboard showing you can still go on and it gives a bit of texture that one and the little number stamp is quite nice as well so you can go in between so you get a few numbers round and about. So you could even try and go on your colours. Don't know if it'll work. Oh yes it's worked quite well. So that's grunged it up a little bit. I'll just give it another blast because it doesn't being memento, it doesn't dry as quickly because it's not meant to go onto a plastic surface. The stays on would go on a plastic surface much better. That's that. Yeah, just about dry. And then the last little bit. For contrast, I think I'll gold gold this time. If you had gold acrylic paint and you didn't have any wax, you could use the gold acrylic paint. But I've got waxes, so a little bit. This is Finnabar's Art Alchemy. A little bit on your finger, and you're just basically gonna daub it wherever it'll take it. It'll pick up all the texture and it just makes it a little bit more interesting, a bit more industrial, a bit more metallic -y. Some bits will pick up more than others. Don't forget to go down the sides of your pipes. And can you see it just highlights all your joins and your collars and everything. It just brings it to life. But because you've got the black underneath there as well, it gives it depth. It isn't just blue and gold. It's got the black which gives it a bit of depth. So turn it on the side as well. Go down the sides and the backs. You will have areas that you'll have white that you haven't been able to get to with your paint. It doesn't matter. It all adds to it. It looks as if it's been painted and then somebody's gone back and quickly painted it again and they've missed bits 
And I actually think the more you go, the better with the, the gold or the silver. And if you want to be really, really build up your layers, you can go back with a bit of silver as well. I actually think I like the gold better, so I might go over go with again with the gold. And if you concentrate on the bits where you've got texture and you've got wrinkles, lines, joins, that is what you want to do because that highlights them. Can you see it looks as if it's in a factory and somebody's painted it and then it's got mucky and somebody else has painted it again with a different colour but part of the paint a lot of the paint's worn off so that's it basically and you could put that you could do that on the top of a box on the top going down the sides of the box you could do a canvas you can do your world's your oyster really you can do so much with this so that's it